Curious George discovers gems. And if you'd like to buy this book, check in the link description down below. George is a good little monkey and always very curious. But sometimes even a good little monkey finds himself not feeling so well. How did George know he was sick? The story starts with spaghetti sauce. George's favourite day of the week was sauce day at Chef Pizgetti's restaurant. He always gave Chef Pizgetti some tips to make the best sauce. But today, instead of being able to taste the chef's new molto jolto sauce, George couldn't taste anything. Chef Pizgetti sent George home, and the man with the yellow hat sent George to bed. Then he took George's temperature. Fever, stuffy nose, candy paws, said the man. You are definitely fighting a germ, George. Do you know what a germ is? George was curious. The man got out a book. There was a picture of a funny looking blob. This is a bad germ, George. There are good germs and bad germs. A bad germ is making you sick, the man explained. Germs are very small. They can be found anywhere in your body. Your nose, your mouth, your stomach, your lungs. But that's enough for biology for today. Tired monkeys need their rest. George might have been sick, but he was still curious. Where did the germ come from? And more important, how could he get rid of it? He was still wondering when he dozed off. Soon George was dreaming. In his dream, he was very small like a germ. He and his pal Gunachi were going to take a trip inside George's sleeping body to fight off the bad germs. George and Gunachi zoomed into sleeping George's mouth and landed right on his tongue. It was soft and squishy, and there was music playing. They hadn't expected that. What could it be? It seemed to be coming from his nose. When George and Gunachi got to the nose, they saw a funny looking blob strumming a guitar and singing. I'll make you sniff and I'll make you sneeze. You won't be smelling that smelly cheese. We'll be making you sweat and making you squirm because that's how germs are being germs. George could hardly believe his eyes. I'm Toots, the singing germ, he introduced himself. And these are my backup singers, the Germets. Seeing Toots in his nose made George upset. He wanted that germ out of him. But Toots did not want to go. In fact, he took the germet and headed to George's lungs, laughing and singing all the way. George and Gnocchi chased the germs to the lungs. George noticed that when the lungs got smaller, air went out, and when the lungs got bigger, a rush of air came in. He was watching himself breathe. George's lungs gave him an idea. He remembered something he saw in the germ book. Coughing and sneezing are the lungs' way of doing their job and trying to force out the bad germs. All George had to do was sneeze Toots right out of his body. George and Gnocchi chased Toots and the germets all the way to George's nose. Then, with one big sneeze, thanks to some well-positioned tickling, out went Toots and the germets out into the air, looking for a new place to live. A few days later, George was feeling much better. He had taken lots of naps, drunk lots of water and juice, and sneezed out those germs. He could even smell again. But it was clear, where Toots and the Germets had found a new home, George's friend, the man with the yellow hat, was sick. The man had taken such good care of George, when he was sick. Now George wanted to help his friend get better too, so he made him some soup. George brought the soup to the man's bed. Thanks, George, the man said. When he tried the soup, he couldn't taste anything. George wanted to taste it, but his friend stopped him. George, don't use that spoon. It might be covered with my cold germs. You don't want to get sick again, do you? The man asked. George definitely did not want to get sick again. That made George curious. How else did germs get from one person to another? 
he looked at his gem book. George knew that the gems were in him just a few days ago, but his friend had not used George's spoon or fork or cup. Do you think the man caught George's gem when he sneezed or coughed? Looking at the book made George sleepy. He drifted into another dream. Now he and Gnocchi were inside the man coming from the man's stomach. They needed to find Toots so they could kick him out again. Well, I've been in lots of places, floating free as a weed, riding on your silverware or flying on sleeves. I played in many people all across this great big land, especially in the folks who don't like to wash their hands, because soap makes me wiggle and soap makes me sneer. One sign of soap and this toots is out of here. If George had heard Toots correctly, getting his friends to wash their his hands would be a good way to help him get rid of the gems and feel better. But Toots and the Germettes remembered George, and they knew to get away from him. We're off to play another body, Toots said. They were going to infect someone else. Get ready to hop on the hand when he wipes his nose, yelled Toots to his Germettes. George didn't want the gems inside his friend, but he didn't want anyone else to get sick either. He had to stop them. When the bell rang and the man got up to answer the door, Toots and the Germettes were ready for a new body. Professor Wiseman's. She also had made soup for her sick friend. George and Gnocchi zoomed out of the gems and landed with a thud on Professor Wiseman's hand. The gems were startled. Ooh, it feels like something is crawling on my hand. Professor Wiseman said, "I should probably wash them inside." Professor Wiseman went to the bathroom and washed Toots and the Germettes right down the drain. Not only had George chased those gems out of his friends, he and some soap had stopped them from getting Professor Wiseman sick too. When George woke up from his dream, he felt great, but he went straight to the bathroom to wash his hands and feet just in case. After two icky adventures with Toots. This healthy little monkey wanted to stay that way. The end.